Hello everyone, I just wanted to take a few minutes and talk about some of the application problems for vectors in section 4.3 that we didn't have time, quite have time for to cover in class. Um, this first one here talks about headings and courses. So uh, pilots and, and captains and things like this can make use of trigonometry in order to find uh, their heading or their course. Um, specifically though, addressing this idea of a heading. Headings are angular measurements in relation to north, considered zero degrees. So this first piece of information, an airplane's traveling with an airspeed of 320 miles per hour. This is the magnitude of the vector, and this would be the angle, but in relation to, in relation to true north right there. So 62 degrees from true north longer and then the magnitude of this vector so the length of that vector would be the the airspeed which we're gonna say is 320 miles per hour and then we have a wind that's blowing at heading of 125 so if we want to measure 125 from true north that right there would be 180 so 125 we'll say is right there and then it's a much smaller vector because it has a uh, less of a magnitude what we need to do now though is relate this to angular measurements how we've been doing it in trigonometry which relates back to the positive x-axis. So if we take if we take the vector representing the airspeed and the heading of the plane, then we need to figure out what this angle measurement right there is. So from the vertical axis, zero degrees up there, it's 62 degrees. So this would have to be 28 degrees, right inside there. And then for the vector representing um, the wind speed here, this vector right here, we need to find, we need to find this measurement from the x-axis, and since it's going down, we're going to call that a negative angle measure. And so, if from that vertical axis is 125, if we take off 90 from that, we're going to get 35. But since it's pointing down from the x-axis, this angle measure here, I'm going to call negative 35 degrees. What we need to do is be able to represent each vector in its component form. We need the x component and the y component of this vector. And same thing here. We need the x and y component of that vector. So what we need to do is imagine a right triangle, this is the y value, this is the x value of that right triangle. And I have this angle measure here, 28 degrees, and we did this back in chapter two. We can find missing measurements of a right triangle using just right triangle tri trigonometry. Um, referencing this angle of 28 degrees, uh, sine of 28, for example, would be the y value over the hypotenuse, 
and cosine of 28 degrees would be the x value over the hypotenuse. So from that, we could say that y is equal to 320 times the sine of 28, and x is equal to 320 times the cosine of 28. And we can perform a similar thing here with this vector, finding the components. We could say that uh, sine of negative 35 is equal to the y value, which is the opposite over the hypotenuse. And I shouldn't have a degree. That should be 42 miles, and that's not a degree measurement. There we go, which is 42. And then the cosine of negative 35 is x over 42. So from that, we get y equals sine. Rather, let's do 42 times the sine of negative 35. And x equals 42 times the cosine of negative 35. So calculating these on a calculator, 320 times the cosine of 28, for example, gives us 282.5. And then 320 times the sine of 28 gives us 150.2. And 42 times the cosine of negative 35 gives 34.4 and 42 times the sine of negative 35 gives negative 24.1. So we can say that the component form of this vector is 282.5 comma 150.2. And the component form of this vector is 34.4 and then negative. The reason we need the component form of each of these <coughs> two vectors is to find the course and the ground speed of the plane. It's going to be adding these two vectors together. So I need to add this vector plus that vector, because if both of these vectors are adding or, or acting together, we have the plane and we have the wind, they're acting um, on each other. So the resultant vector is going to be the sum. Now, we can do this graphically. If you remember, one way to add vectors graphically was to form a parallelogram. And then the resultant vector there would be the vector that goes from this corner, let's try that again, from this corner to that corner of that parallelogram. So that's the vector that represents the course and the ground speed of the plane. And what we'd have to do is then figure out, you know, the x and the y components of that. It's kind of hard to do just by looking at the graph. So we add those vectors numerically just by adding the components. So we have the component here and here. So we have 282.5, 150.2. We can add that to the other vector. So 282.5 plus 34.4 is 316.9. And then 150.2 minus 24.1 
is 126.1. So those are the components of that resultant vector. The ground speed would be the magnitude of that. So the square root of 316.9 squared plus 136.1 squared equals 341.1. This is what was it, kilometers an hour? What do we have here? Miles per hour? And then the course would be the direction. <clears throat> so one way to configure that out is using the inverse tangent. So the inverse tangent, 126.9 divided by 316, let's try that again. Inverse tangent, 126.1 divided by 316.9 is, let's call that 21.7. But this is in relation to the x-axis, 21.7. And the course needs to be in terms of a heading from 0 degrees <clears throat> here. So um, the gap would be uh, that 90, adding um, whatever would complete that angle to make it 90 degrees. If here, if from here to here is 21.7, from here to here is 21.7, and the whole angle there, <clears throat> excuse me, is 90, and then we take 21.7 away from 90, we get 68.3. Okay. And I believe there was one more. Yeah. So the other problem I wanted to go over is from 4.3 also uh, another application of vectors called work. And the definition of work, <clears throat> excuse me, um, it's when a force is applied and uh, some kind of an object is moved, that's called displacement. The amount of the movement is called the displacement and that's called S. So for example, if you're pushing a box along the floor, the force that you're pushing, that's your force. The, the distance that it moves, that's the displacement. 
and we can calculate the work that's being done using this formula here. The magnitude of the force multiplied by the displacement multiplied by the cosine of the angle where the angle um, if there's an angle of the force. Now what what that means here, I've drawn two examples. Let's say we have this 20 pound weight lying on the floor and this weight is being pulled with a force of 50 pounds and the force is being pulled directly parallel to the ground and the displacement is 10 feet. So the, the angle of the force is parallel to the displacement. The displacement of this box is, or this object is just moving straight across the floor. So we would say the displacement vector um, is zero degrees and the force is also acting parallel to that displacement. So there is no angle between the force vector and the displacement vector in this picture here. But on this picture here, there's still a force of 50 pounds, but rather than that force acting straight across like this one, this force is moving off in this direction with an angle of 30 degrees in between the force vector and then the displacement vector is moving in this direction because the box is moving straight across the floor still. And so there's a 30 degree angle between the force vector and the displacement vector. So in this angle, in this case, the angle would be 30 degrees. So in, in case one over here, where the force is in the same direction as the displacement vector, uh, the angle alpha there is uh, zero degrees, cosine of zero is one. So it's really just the product of the force and the displacement so it's 50 times one, or 50 times 10 rather, which is 500 foot pounds. So the work being done here is 500 foot pounds. But for this example, the force is still 50 pounds and the displacement is still 10 feet. So it's 50 times 10, but then we multiply it by the cosine of 30. The cosine of 30 is the square root of three over two five times 10 times the square root of three over two is 433 foot pounds. So adding a direction onto the force that isn't parallel to the displacement vector uh, impacts the amount of work being done.